There is an interesting parallel between casinos and United States government. The concept of the casino is a way to trick you into wasting your money on games set up to make you lose. However, it gets you to believe in the illusion that you, and the house, have a 50-50 chance of coming out with more money. This is honestly common knowledge at this point. The term, the house always wins, is a cliche for a reason. So when someone says that they will win it big in the casino, they're either seen as someone with a problem, delusional, taken up by the rush of gambling, or they have some strategy to cheat. It's important to know that the last one, if caught cheating, the repercussions are not to be taken lightly. This is a good, albeit exaggerated, given my experiences largely come from the media, comparison to the way in which the United States government works. It gives the illusion that participation is necessary for it to run, even though the only thing necessary is the maintenance of the illusion. In the end, the dictations of the state, which counters the will of its constituents at every turn, can be seen as the result of the choices of those constituents. This is also known, at least for the most part, by the average person. The average person feels so disconnected to politics, not because of a privileged apathy, but because there isn't a clear vision on how policies affect them. More so, it isn't clear what politicians seem to have their interest in mind. That's none. So it's easy to write it off as a rigged game, a match that was fixed before the first tickets were ever bought. For the most part, this is accurate. Yet there are still those that believe that if the rules are followed correctly, then their goals will be met. Or worse, there are those that no one believe the system is set up against them. However, play by the rules anyway, but have some strategy that they will believe will achieve that victory. Time and time again has shown us that just like the casino newcomer or the card counter, they will end up down on their luck broke or their kneecaps taken from under them. So then why do folks still do it? Why do people who continue to get lied to, mistreated, exploited, reputation smeared, lives ruined, run back to the same system that does it? There are a lot of answers for these questions, and I will explore a few. For those who are enthusiastic about an election, typically they are the type to see the battle less from a material one where there are things to lose and see the participation as one of an emotional investment. Like an average casino goer which throws their money away for one night of fun and still have enough to travel home, this person in a political system sees politics more of a game. It's not a vie for power, but a battle over culture. It allows validation in an ideological sense. The best way to see this is when real systemic changes are pushed for. In those scenarios, this person will do a complete change given now that material conditions are up for stake. They feel threatened. Those that aren't directly affected by the system are often quick to be devoted to things that only offer a symbolic notion of change, rather than a material one. This brings us to the other type. A good parallel would be the casino girl that is basically trapped, and their only way out is to gamble whatever they have left in hopes to come out positive. This isn't a perfect analogy. For those people and groups that not get themselves into the situation where they're stuck relying on an unreliable state, However, it's not the choice that I'm drawing the parallel to, but the desperation. This person doesn't do it for joy or thrill, but because they're out of options. If they could leave with no harm done, they probably would and never look back. In a sense, the reason why those who are directly affected by it feel that there is no other option. With no alternative, what reason would they have to reject the system? The last one is the progressive. A perfect analogy is the card counter, the cheater. The one that is fully aware of the system and how it works, but instead of blindly participates, believes that they can beat the house at its own game. They know merely repeating the same tactics will only fuck themselves over like the rest, so they come up with a strategy. This group is honestly the most naive of them all, to me. That is because the house already knows this type of person exists. And if I could drop the metaphor for a second, in the same way the house will ensure it wins even after the betting is done, whatever wins the progressive may think they have, or legitimately gains. The state is aware and working overtime to whittle them away. And when it comes to comparing organizational and institutional power, it's easy to see who's going to come out on top in that battle. See, participating in the system, no matter what your reason, is just like gambling at the casino. The only guaranteed win is not playing.